Welcome back to another quick bites video. The reason why I'm doing this one is that I recently sat down and watched almost an hour in two different videos about bites and beginning bites. After watching the videos, I was a little bit confused and thought that it would absolutely put anyone else off wanting to try to use bites. Within the videos, you didn't get to see much of Ot itself. You did, however, get to see quite a bit of time in Excel and some other third-party database programs. I gather from the videos the point being some sort of system for monitoring and keeping track of what songs you have in Ot and, in part, an attempt to avoid doubling up on files. It seemed a rather complex process to go through and it would be rather daunting to those who are not familiar with the particular programs or have the time. Your choice, watch the videos, if you wish to go that way, that is your choice. But I felt that um, there is a far easier way to achieve the same process, which is why I'm here now. Now, obviously, for Otz to work, you need to have music, which is what I have here at this stage. You obviously just simply save your songs to the hard drive and then import them into Otz. Now, how you store them on the hard drive is entirely up to you. Find a filing system that works for you. I simply just have a folder for each LP, CD, etc. that I have. Obviously, I use a mixture of um, folders. As you can see, I have one folder for each LP, and I have a number of folders so that I don't get too many files in one folder. But how you store them is up to you. As I said, I have stored them via record title, you can store them by artist title if you want to, you can store them by genre, and you can name the folders absolutely anything you like, however it works for you, it will not make any difference to OTS, OTS will still find them, OTS will still be able to play them, so how you store them is entirely up to you and a system that works for you. Now as for dealing with doubles, the same with any files on the hard drive. If you get doubles, the easiest way to find them is to simply use the good old trusty search routine. And in this case, we're using OTS files, so we'll do the good old at dot OTS file extension. And away we go, and up comes all of the OTS files that I am using in OTS. Uh, a little click on the name heading there will sort them. And all I have to do is simply scroll down, locate my doubles. When I happen to find a double, I can simply select on it. And I can either select to delete the file. Or, as I like to do, I select, I rename the file with a B, B, A, K extension. So, as you can see, I have the original file name, I have the OTS extension, which is in standard format, and on the end of that, I put the B, A, K extension. Now, to me, that tells me it's a backup file. If you have something else that you can use that understands, it's up to you. Again, it doesn't matter. All you do is change it from OTS to something else so that OTS doesn't pick it up as a workable file. All right? I use backup. The reason for doing that is that if the original file ever gets damaged, I simply go to the backup and remove the file extension, and I have my new file there as opposed to having to go and copy it off the CD again or download it from the net again or get it off my record. I already have it on the hard drive there ready to go. All I have to do is change the extension. 
and that solves my backup, my doubles problem. Fairly simple to me. Again, you can buy or download programs that are designed to locate double up on files. You can run one of them if you want to. It does the same thing, but basically that's all there is to it. You have your files on the hard drive, and as you can see, I have a backup there, and I have renamed it with the BAK extension. This will not show up in OTS. OTS won't load it because it is not a recognised OTS file extension. But in the event that the copy I am using gets damaged, I just simply remove the BAK extension and I have replaced my file. The size of the file and the size of the hard drive have not been a concern with backups. I've not warranted the need to make disk space by removing files. Um, so I have left them there. If you do have a file saving space problem, then delete them. But as I said, it's a lot more easier and a lot more convenient if they're already there and you just have to replace the extension. Now that you've done that, the other section of those videos I watched had a list of files in Excel. Um, I'm not quite sure why they were put into Excel apart from just keeping a, a record of what songs you have. But if that is what you want to do, the rather complicated way that they went about getting it into Excel by copying web page data and importing it to Excel and re cleaning up the format, removing the hyperlinks that were in there, etc, etc, etc. There is a far easier way again. Go into Watch, click on the Artist tab there and sort them, or if you want to sort, then if you click, right click and select all, you then can go up and you can either export as an item list, OTS file, or as a plain text file. Save it as a plain text file. My OTS songs. And you save the file. You now have on your hard drive a text file containing a list of all of the songs you have in OTS. You can then load it into Notepad, Microsoft Word, Microsoft Excel, or even email it off to a friend. Easy. The one other thing that that file did touch on was templates and the fact that some people seem to do them the wrong way. How you do a template is your own personal choice. If it works for you, then it is the right way. Obviously, there are certain rules within the template format that you must follow. Like any other programming language, there is a specific syntax that you must follow. But if you follow that syntax and the playlist works, then it works for you and there is nothing wrong with it. Of course, the interesting thing that I noticed while doing, watching that video was that when they generated their template, as I'm doing now, as you, can, as you can see, I have a working template there that works. And if you look down the list, you can see that the list is complete without any gaps. They themselves acknowledged within the video that they had made an error in the template and if you looked at their playlist you noticed that there was a number of sections where there was no song, it was a blank. And as you can see here we have a fully working template and in actual fact if you look carefully you can see there I have an intro there 
if you go down further, no, we don't have any others, but we have a fully working playlist there that will work fine, as opposed to the other one that had a whole lot of holes in it. Now that is basically the end of the template. I just wanted to show people just how easy it really was. After, as I said, just over an hour of video, which made things look very complicated and gave people the impression that they needed to use Excel, they needed to use a third-party program, actually two other third-party programs that they consistently promoted. I actually wondered whether they were actually promoting the programs or doing anything with what's. And I've done it in less time. So don't get worried about doing something wrong in OTS. If it works for you, if you understand how it works, then it is the right way. Thank you for tuning in.